This is the morning edition. Our news team remains on the ground in Abaco this Tuesday as that island is rebounding from the devastating storm. We send it over to our Kishla Adelie. Good morning, Kishla. Good morning, Jiminita. We're coming to you live from Marsh Harbor. And as you know, this is the boating capital of the Bahamas. Now, there is evidence of that here, sadly, all across the island as vessels of every shape and size are strewn across the island as Hurricane Dorian had its way with them. But fishermen here say they won't abandon ship. They're looking to reel in their biggest catch yet as they slowly return to home. Seagulls occupy the once busy shores on the northern end of Abaco. It's this part of the island where the fishing industry thrived and is now in limbo trying to keep its heads above waters after Hurricane Dorian. Uh, been pretty rough, been pretty rough. This is Beltram Curry, a veteran to the seas. Curry was known for his work as a commercial fisherman, bringing in fresh cash to supply his restaurant and neighboring towns. After Dorian, it's been a bit of a struggle. Oh, I've been in the boat from August. Why? The weather, the hurricane came. So after we, you know, had to tend to your house, whatever to do to the house, we had to do that. Make it very slow, hard, hard. Yeah, because I lost, I lost my big boat. Fisheries officer Leslie McIntosh, a fisherman himself, says this has been a plight to most boatsmen. After a hurricane, you know, you have fishermen who lose their boats and and lose their, their their fishing gears and what have you. And so I think that's the biggest that's the biggest part about getting getting back, um, because you know some fishermen are on the northern end. Um, lose their boats and what have you. Um, the same thing in East Grand Bahama. And so the biggest thing now is them being able to get that jump start to be able to get back where they was. And we spoke to another fisherman who we met gazing out at his first love, the waters. He says probably the biggest hindrance to fishermen looking to get back on the seas has been nonstop bad weather. After Harkin Dorian, the weather, number one, is, is really the biggest problem. We ha right now we have an uh, a lot of surges, so it's almost like nearly impossible to go fishing and stuff. But other than that, like I said, you know, you got to find other ways to survive. And so that is what we're trying to do right now, even though things still a little slow on the line, but you got to make do what you got to make do. The United Nation estimates that the lobster and fisheries industry has suffered a tremendous setback due to Hurricane Dorian. However, fishermen say despite everything, they remain optimists, just like this group of kids who tried to show us a thing or two about fishing. Definitely, once things come back to normal, I, definitely that's where I'm going, because that's where I make my livelihood. I'm hopeful, yeah. I, I go back this dog. Next year, if we set a lot of traps again, it'll pick back up. Anthony Smith, ZNS Network News. Well, as you saw there, fishermen are hopeful that Mother Nature will be good to them once again. But there are some hazards that may be created by Hurricane Dorian. A drive along any Abaco road would reveal those Abaco pines uh, downed by the hundreds and thousands, literally uh, bent broken uh, to the strong winds of Hurricane Dorian. Now, we spoke with uh, an official of the Bahamas National Trust yesterday about uh, the severity of that issue. What we have noticed is that the south of Abaco uh, fared pretty well. Uh, between here and North Abaco, there was severe uh, tree. Between Marsh Harbor, well, Spring City, the area of Spring City, um, and North Abaco, uh, the, there was a number of trees that are down. Uh, Percentage-wise, I would say about 50%, you know, uh, minimum of uh, the trees are down. Now that is much more than an eyesore. When the heat is on and the sun is uh, blazing down on those Abaco pines, which would of course have uh, been dried down in about six, to six months or so when we're in the peak of the heat, that can become a quite significant hazard. 
at some point when these trees you know have, have completely dried they become a serious problem for intense wildfires and um, potential threats for communities and our essential services like the airports and the you know government complexes as such um, so we, we we're hoping that we could probably get you know a company or so in here to do some salvage operations to remove those trees to minimize the fuel load to avoid that that intense uh, fire at some point well it's going to be another day of exploration for our news team here in marsh harbor abaco and beyond as we continue to talk to people hear their concerns hear their uh, desires about returning home and their new hopes for uh new life in in abaco post story and antone smith uh is joining me she's part of the team here and antone we've learned so much about what what people want to see and where they want to go going forward Yes, Keishla, they're especially really hopeful for that winter residence season. There's a lot of business open from restaurants, hotels are open, so they're really, really hopeful for that. Today I'm going to speak to the Chamber of Commerce president here in Abaco and see what they're expecting in the few months going forward. All right. So we'll get all of that to you today. Of course, join us in the Bahamas tonight for the latest as Abaco looks to make a comeback. Back to you in the studio, Jimenita.